What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Varsity Overland channel. Today I'm going to try to do a quick review of all of my camping gear and mods, I guess you could call them, that I've done to the ZR2 since I got the truck back in February. So if you're interested in all that, then stick around. So we're back in the state forest, about 10 minutes from my house. Um, I promise I don't always use the same state forest, by the way. I actually have like three either forests or parks within 10 minutes of my home. I kind of get lucky in that regard. So um, we're back out in the state forest. I got the dog with me and uh, I'm going to do a quick walk around of the rig of the ZR2, show you all the mods that I put into the truck um, prior to our long summer road trip and uh, maybe one or two that I've done since um, since we got back from the trip. So I will mention um, pros and cons of, of everything that I, that I talk about, as well as you know what I might plan for the future uh, of that particular item or of that particular modification to the truck. Now I know some people uh, might not necessarily call these things mods, right? Because I didn't actually modify the truck uh, in its performance in any way. So whatever you want to call it, mods, accessories, um, you know, changes, gear, equipment, whatever. Okay. But this is everything that, uh, I added to the truck after I bought it, uh, roughly six months ago or seven months ago. Um, and I have the tripod set up on my uh, bed rack right now. So why don't we start there? All right. So the first modification, or one of the very first modifications I went with on the truck was a bed rack. And this is the Yakima Overhaul HD bed rack with the Overhaul uh, HD, or not Overhaul, I should just say HD bars on top of the bed rack. Um, and I'm using the T-slot or T-track uh, feet mounting options, okay, to go into my tanu cover. So originally, um, funny story behind this, originally I just got the regular Yakima HD, um, overhaul HD bed rack. So it just kind of hooked onto the bed. I had no tanu cover, um, and that worked fine because originally we tested everything out by going down to Virginia and North Carolina, and I did a um, OHV trail down there. I think it was Wolf Den Trail in the Uahari National Forest. Um, and the bed rack was fine and everything worked out really well. The only reason why I didn't have the Tanu cover was because when I went to install my Tanu cover, I realized it was for a Ford Ranger and not for a Chevy Colorado. So that sent me back just a little bit. But the Yakima Overhaul HD bed rack is phenomenal. I have not had a single problem at all regarding this bed rack. Um, and the fact that you can get the bed rack by itself and then buy the mounting options for tanu covers afterwards is really cool. Or you can just buy it as a set with the tanu cover mounting options um, if you already have a tanu cover on your truck. Of course, the tanu cover needs to have these T-slots in order for this option to work out. So why don't I talk about the tanu cover right now. The tanu cover that I'm using is a... Pace Edwards Ultra Groove Tanu Cover by Lear. Um, there's a logo in there somewhere, right? By Lear. Um, and this Tanu Cover retracts a lot like a Retrax cover does. And I was going to go with the Retrax cover, um, and I don't have anything against it, and I actually didn't read any, any negative reviews about it. Um, this one was just a little bit cheaper. The top of it is not the same material as the Retrax Pro covers are, um, but it works out just fine. Let me see if I can, I'm going to move all this, so I'll talk about this in a minute, but I'll move this so that you guys can see a demonstration of the Tanu cover, um, and then we'll move on to the next mod. All right, so we got the tire out of the way, and 
The biggest difference that I noticed besides the material of um, a Pace Edwards Ultra Groove and a Retrax, um, besides the material, the biggest difference I noticed was the latching system. Um, the latch to open it is actually underneath as opposed to on top, okay? So the Ultra Groove, the latching system's underneath, and I kind of like that because once I close the tailgate and I lock, there's nothing on top, you know, to be messed with um, in order to get into the into the bed of the truck so you don't have to deal with the tonneau cover. Um, as opposed to the Retrax, which has the locking system right here. Um, so there's like a little a little latch that pops up, you press a button, and then it, that kind of activates everything. Uh, and I think it has a lock of its own. Um, maybe that doesn't matter to you, uh, but for me, I was like, you know what? It might be a lot easier if I can just close my tonneau cover, not have to worry about locking anything on the tonneau cover, because once I lock the tailgate, you can't get into the bed. So that's why I went with the Ultra Groove. Um, and as far as anything that works with the Retrax, as far as like T-slot options, also works with an Ultra Groove. Um, I went through a lot of research online to figure out whether or not a Yakima rack would work or various other racks would work. Um, and everything I read online basically used Retrax as kind of like the gold standard for T-slot tonneau covers. Um, and then luckily I stumbled across a forum where a couple people mentioned Ultra Groove and how they're virtually the same as far as compatibility. So if you want to save a couple hundred dollars, um, I would definitely go with the Ultra Groove by Lear. Uh, and as far as I have been able to tell, you're not sacrificing durability or uh, safety. I haven't gotten any water on the inside of the truck in the truck bed. Um, so that part's up to you, I guess. Next, I think it's appropriate to move on to the tire carrier. So this is a Wilco off-road. I think it's the offset hitch gate. All right, tire carrier. Um, and I believe this model uh, is still on their website, but it's not their newest offset model. Um, so, the hitch gate actually comes to, you know, almost the end of one side of your bumper and then also comes to the end exactly on the other side. So it's about the same length. It's, you know, it's equal on both sides. Um, and I know a lot of the new ones that Wilco makes only have about half. So they only extend to one side versus the other. Um, and it really, I don't really think it matters that much. Um, depends on what kind of look you like better. I've actually backed this thing up into... Uh, some rocks and some trees um, on my trip and did not notice any damage on the on the hitch gate itself or on the bumper nothing moved so in that regard it's kind of nice to have something that extends um, nearly the length of your bumper now right now I have a couple items mounted onto the hitch gate uh, tire carrier that I will definitely be moving because something that you'll notice, and I'll see if I can pull this thing while holding the camera still, after you remove the pin, notice what happens because of the weight. See that? So once I yank it off, it sits lower than the receiver. And I guess that could be a good thing because it, you know, it bears more of the weight once it's up here. But as far as actually like muscling this thing into position, it's kind of hard. So currently I have a high lift jack mounted using um, CBI off-road or maybe it's Prinsu, right? Um, the high lift mounting options. These are supposed to go into the Prinsu rack, um, but I figured out a way to have them go through this mounting bracket on the Wilco and uh, just come through and secure it into place. And luckily most of the weight also is bared by the bar itself um, coming off the hitch. So 
this is super secure and I have not had a problem with it at all. However, it does put a lot of extra weight um, on the tire carrier on top of this jerry can. Um, this isn't made by any specific, you know, overland or off-roading um, company. I think it's just a basic jerry can and jerry can holder um, that I was able to use some carriage bolts and mount onto the Wilco bracket as well. And initially I was like, oh yeah, this is a great idea. It's perfect. Um, plus it fills in the gap, right? Between the tire carrier and the bed of the truck. Cause I was a little worried that it would aesthetically look kind of weird. Um, I, I wanted this whole like little gap here in the center to be filled. But of course, then you drive around with it on there during a, a long road trip and before you know it the metal starts to bang into the tailgate of the truck so that was not a happy day um, and I'm definitely looking for a way to remove this whole thing in fact I was actually waiting just to uh, complete this video before I moved it because um, since we've returned from our our long trip I got a brand new uh, gas can or fuel fuel can situation uh, from a company called Trailed Online. Um, and it's actually a fuel canister that is the same shape of a tire. And it actually goes underneath the truck where the old spare tire used to go. And uh, doesn't take up any extra space on the back of the truck. So I'll definitely be doing a review of that uh, in the near future once I get it. Um, filled, mounted, uh, and then I can get this jerry can off here. And I want to get the high lift off here as well, just so that I'm not putting so much weight on the tailgate, you know, all the time. Um, and there isn't, isn't any banging into the, into the tailgate anymore. Um, I just got to figure out what else to do with the, the high lift. Cause yeah, I could mount it on top of the Prinsu, but like I've said in previous videos, I'm trying to figure out ways to make everything a lot more more manageable, easier to disassemble because once it starts snowing, I got to put my truck in the garage. And if I have to unbolt and unscrew everything just to make sure it fits before and after every camping trip, it's going to be kind of a pain. So stay tuned for, um, for more of that. Next, let's move on to the RTT. So this is the iCamper SkyCamp 2.0. And it is amazing. Um, I've done a couple reviews, quick reviews, and you know, hundreds of posts about this thing on Instagram. Um, but I'll have to do like a full in-depth, um, you know, complete walk around breakdown video of this rooftop tent in the near, in the near future on YouTube because it is insane. Um, also, the top of my truck is going to be, the top of the can of the uh, tent and the top of the truck are going to be filthy because it is autumn in New England and stuff falls out of the trees every 16.2 seconds. So, anyway, as a rooftop tent, this thing is insane. Um, the hard shell is definitely beneficial and definitely worth the money. The locks and latches have been super secure. I mean, we stayed in this thing... I don't even know. Um, we only had a couple pit stops where we actually stayed in hotels or uh, stayed with a friend in, in California. So, I mean, over the course of five weeks, I'd say average six nights a week. So, what, 30 nights? 30 nights straight. And that's not including any other camping trips that we've done uh, either before the summer trip or since the summer trip. So, I don't know. I'd probably put us at close to 50 nights in this thing so far and it's amazing um it's ginormous when the thing's actually opened uh it was big enough to fit two adults and two dogs um up there no problem at all um the mattress that it comes with uh it could be better we actually keep a different mattress pad foam mattress pad rolled up inside of a dry bag um that we 
kind of like bring up there and install. We tried to store it up there. Some people say that you can actually store items up here when it's closed, like uh, a full sleeping bag unrolled or another mattress pad um, rolled or unrolled. We tried and we couldn't get it to work. So if you have any suggestions in that regard, please leave a comment down below. Um, or if there's like a special thing you had to do to make it work, we couldn't figure it out. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, this thing is, is a beast. It is insane. I'm definitely glad that we went with a hard shell versus a soft shell as our first rooftop tent. In fact, you know, we might not ever go back. In the future, I'd actually like to get a smaller tent for solo trips, something that I can um, drop down low over the tiny cover and not have to stick way up here uh, over the bed and the cab. But given the length of the eye camper, we didn't have a choice. Um, so, you know, getting it in the garage every time we want to do that, got to take the tent off the top of the truck. So if I could put a smaller tent right over the, the tonneau cover using these smaller bars, that'd be nice. But anyway, um, moving away from the eye camper while I'm up here, um, Prince rack. I did, I think I talked plenty about that in my first YouTube video. Um, but right now I have a camping table from REI strapped up here. Um, it's been up there all week because I was planning on going to Overland Expo East. Insert crying emoji here. Didn't happen. Um, and then on the other side is my water port. So after that, we have our Rome Adventure awning. This is the four foot awning um, that I'd love to do a review for by itself. So things that I'm planning to do like individual reviews for on YouTube, make it, make their own video for would be the eye camper, uh, the Rome adventure awning. Um, that's probably going to be it. I think I've talked enough about, about some of my other items. Um, but definitely the awning and definitely the, the tent will get their own reviews. Um, you'll notice that the awning has straps on it and that's because I got Prince Urak's low profile awning bracket thinking like oh great idea I can leave this thing on all the time pull into the garage it'll clear and nothing will be an issue but of course it barely leaves any clearance for the doors to close because it's a low profile awning uh, awning bracket so in order to kind of like lift up the little extra that sags, we use these straps. Um, so something to think about, actually, if you're looking at awnings or awning brackets, um, read some reviews about how low it actually sags if you get a low profile bracket, as opposed to the like stereotypical or original bracket. I think the original bracket would have the whole thing set up just a little bit higher, you know, maybe two inches higher. Uh, and if that were the case, then we wouldn't have an issue here with the top of the door. But as soon as I installed it, I went to go open the door and it snagged every time. So when you add these little straps on, it gives it just enough clearance not to touch. So as far as the awning setup and takedown, adding extra straps, you know, that's another 10 seconds. So it's not really a huge deal. Um, but something to consider we'll move around to the uh the front of the truck now take a look at some of the modifications i did there so one of the first mods all right very very first mods that i did to the truck as soon as i bought it i did it within like three weeks was the snorkel okay now i'm gonna be honest and this is a little bit embarrassing i think snorkels are awesome Every time I've ever been driving around in the past without this particular truck, every time I've been driving around with any previous vehicle, if I saw a car, or I should particularly say, you know, a truck or SUV, if I saw one that had a snorkel, I was like, ooh, that's so cool. So the second I had that option, I was like, snorkel, let's go. Uh, and then anytime somebody asked about the snorkel, I was like, yeah. I read that improves fuel economy or it keeps the engine cleaner or the air filter cleaner in blah, 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 insert excuse here because you just think snorkels are awesome. And that's definitely, that's definitely me. 
okay? Now, that being said, we drove through Moab and we drove through Southern California and uh, Montana and like I, I had the engine inspected twice and I was definitely expecting there to be an issue with the air filter or an issue with some sort of dust collection or whatever, and there wasn't. So maybe that's because of the snorkel, you know? So uh, props there if that's the case, but honestly, I just think it looks crazy awesome. Uh, and the, the, uh, the company AEV um, is where I got the snorkel from. They're the ones who came out with the, uh, the Bison version of the Colorado ZR2. Um, and it worked out just great. So the three big mods I went with right off the bat were the snorkel, the Princey rack, and then the, uh, the Yakima rack in the back. Um, so obviously you could see where my mind was at because my first thoughts were not lift the truck, get a winch and add more underbody protection. <laughs> so, um, luckily the ZR2 as a stock vehicle is insanely capable. Uh, so those things did not hinder anything regarding our trip over the summer or um, any trails that I've done since or, you know, issues that I've had. Um, and then something that I've done since the trip is really simple. They're just KC lights. Um, something interesting about the ZR2, where are the fog lights? Like, it's 2021, people. That is definitely something I had to sacrifice when I was looking at ZR2s, was like, what's, what's this pocket here, and, and why does it exist if there are no lights? I've seen plenty of people that have cut them out, you add some nice rigid lights in there, which is probably something I'm going to do, but I, I just, uh, I don't understand that part. Does it look cool? I, I guess. But I would have loved to have a nice set of fog lights sitting right there. So anyway, I went with the KCs and they're attached to this license plate uh, mounting bracket, which is super simple. Okay, just bolts on to the front of the truck behind your license plate bracket. So that's really simple. And I went with this. Now it's not like the sturdiest thing in the world. Obviously, I can wobble it a little bit. Um, I mean, I haven't had a problem with it driving on trails, but I went with this as a temporary option because I would love to get my hands on a CBI covert front bumper. And that is definitely going to be happening in the near future. Either, either that or a relentless fabrication. Um, I, I saw pink peak suspensions video about their ZR2 and they went with a relentless fab front bumper. So it'll be a toss up. It'll depend on which one kind of offers some more lighting options or really which one's nicer on my wallet. So moving on to the interior, which is severely lacking. Um, I haven't really done anything as far as mods to the interior. I got a Garmin InReach Mini uh, for navigation, but other than that, everything in here is just stock. I plan on setting up that whole navigation panel in the center, you know, having things popping off the, uh, the center console like it's, you know, a command center in here. <laughs> but right now, um, there isn't a whole lot going on, even the back seat. I'd like to get the goose gear set up um, with the rear seat delete, but I'm also thinking, why did I bother paying for the extra leather seats if I'm just gonna delete them? So as far as interior mods, there might not be a whole lot happening in the future. Um, maybe just storage, so I don't have to just throw everything around, but there's nothing special going on inside the truck right now so other than uh other than all that there's not a whole lot else i mean there's some small things obviously i put these recovery boards up here on the yakima on the yakima rack um i do have the skyline bars set up which i mentioned in a previous video uh and not necessarily a mod it's a little bit more of like a unique touch i added these little Varsity OV decals, really simple, got them from Amazon, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I mean, pretty basic. It's kind of like a bare bones, minimum modification situation right now. Oh, I don't know if you can consider these mods, but these are the WeatherTech, WeatherTech uh, rain guards on top. It just adds a little bit extra like darkness, you know what I mean? 
to the profile of the truck. Um, maybe in the future, I'll also go for the um, bug shield or bug guard on top of the hood right here. I mean, to be honest, I can run my hand across the, sh the uh, hood and feel in certain spots little tiny nicks in the paint, which is kind of upsetting, right? Because I did only get this seven months ago. But... You can't take it into the woods and take it off-roading and take it into the desert and into the mountains and blah, blah, blah. And then complain about, you know, the fact that it gets dirty. So, that's everything I got. Come here, girl. You ready to go home? Daddy's done filming his silly videos. Time to eat some dinner.